Hey everyone, I'm Staff Sergeant Working. I'm a Master Fitness Trainer Instructor here at the U.S. Army Physical Fitness School. I wanted to expand today on our discussion about anaerobic and aerobic training. So what I've done here is I've listed all the components of aerobic training and all the components of anaerobic training and then how the general adaptations play into us maximizing performance and minimizing fatigue. So with aerobic capacity, we talked a couple of weeks ago how it's a uh, low to moderate intensity, um, long duration, mid to long duration, and our bodies are using oxygen to create energy, which means we're able to sustain this type of activity for longer periods of time. But the intensity is less, so we're looking at about 75% or less of our max heart rate. And the activity, again, is gonna last longer than two minutes. Some of the activities that we do uh, as far as tactical athletes, I mentioned the dismounted patrols and our ruck marches. So we're evaluated on our aerobic capacity during the ACFT with that two mile run. So what are some things that we can do to get better, right? We talked about um, going out and running for three minutes and then jogging for three minutes. I mentioned that last time, but let's get specific. How about some 800 meter repeats? How about mile repeats? Those ability group runs, you're, you're definitely setting a solid foundation for your aerobic capacity with that. And then our foot marches. All right, so with anaerobic capacity training, remember that it's high intent, short duration. Uh, our bodies don't need oxygen to create energy, and that's why this is an unsustainable type work. Um, we're, the intensity is greater than 75% of our max heart rate, and the duration is usually less than two minutes, right? So, High intense, short duration, not sustainable. Um, some of the tactical athlete type activities are gonna be our three to five second rushes, um, reacting to indirect and direct contact. Um, and again, we're evaluated on our anaerobic capacity with the sprint drag carry on the ACFT. So some of the ways that we can get better, uh, FM 7-22, chapter 10, highlights a lot of these um, activities, 3060s, 6120s, 300 yard shuttle run, and 400 meter repeats. The cool thing about all of these types of, of training, we can progress, say for the 3060s, that's a one to two, one work to rest ratio. So one to two work to rest ratio, uh, we can progress to a 3030, so a one to one work to rest ratio. And that's just gonna help improve our anaerobic capacity even further. All right, so let's talk about what's really going on inside our bodies and why this helps us maximize performance and minimize fatigue, as I mentioned in the beginning. So, our hearts become bigger and stronger. And what that means is we can then pump more oxygenated blood to our working muscles. So our, we have an increase in our stroke volume. And what that is is the amount of blood that is pumped per contraction. VO2 max is the amount of uh, is, the, is our body's ability to utilize oxygen uh, most efficiently. So our hearts get bigger and stronger, they're able to pump more blood per contraction, carrying more oxygen to the muscles. So what, what's going on inside the muscles? We have um, an increase in the capillary density. And capillaries are smaller blood vessels that carry oxygenated blood to the muscles. So we have now an increase in those blood vessels carrying more oxygenated blood uh, to the muscles. Mitochondria, I'm sure you guys remember from grade school, mitochondria was the powerhouse of the cell. So we have not only an increase in mitochondria, but we also have an increase in size and number of the mitochondria. So we are working most efficiently uh, now creating energy because again, powerhouse of the cell, that's where our energy is being created. Also increases our ability to buffer lactic acid. And what this means is we want to create less lactic acid and we want our bodies to be more efficient at removing uh, it as well. Increased muscle antioxidant capacity. There's a lot of waste products that are produced when we are physically active and uh, having this capacity enables us to clear out those waste products. The biggest physical, physiological adaptation to anaerobic and aerobic capacity training is going to be the reliance on fat as fuel. When our bodies work more efficiently, we're carrying more blood, more oxygenated blood to our muscles, uh, we're able to utilize fat as fuel. 
which helps us to sustain uh, exercise longer. So with that, we've gone over aerobic capacity training, anaerobic capacity training, and as tactical athletes, we have to be efficient at both. We can't just specialize like some um, sports athletes do, right? We have to be good and have a solid foundation in both of these so that we can perform our jobs uh, optimally in the Army. If you all have any questions, please put them in the comments. We'd be happy to answer. Have a great week.